My name is Sarah, and I'm married to Tom. We've been married for two years now. I really wanted to have kids by now, but it hasn't happened yet. I like my job, it makes me feel important, so I'm not in a rush to have kids, but Tom feels differently. He recently told me he's upset that we haven't had kids yet. How long until we have a baby? Please, hurry up, my mom can't wait, he said. I went to the hospital, but the doctor said nothing was wrong with me. If you want, we can get you checked up too, I suggested to Tom. You're saying it's my fault we can't have kids. It can't be me, Tom argued. How can you be so sure? Sometimes it's the men who have issues, I replied. I can't be the problem. Stop saying that, Tom insisted. Well, if neither of us has fertility problems, let's see it as a good thing and wait a bit longer, I suggested. Why are you going easy on yourself? My mom really wants to meet her grandkids soon, Tom kept insisting. Every time Tom sees his mom, she asks, is the baby here yet? He's still refusing to get checked at the hospital, even though it's causing issues. He's sure he's not the reason we can't have kids. I got another checkup because I was worried, but everything seemed fine. Tom doesn't get that we only have one chance each month to have a baby. He keeps asking, are you ready for a baby yet? I'm tired of him and mom asking, are you ready for a baby yet? Mom said the same thing today. She wants to see her grandchild's face soon, I complained. Again, please let's hurry up. Mom really wants it, Tom urged. We can't rush this, I explained. Every time we talk, it feels like we end up in the same argument. We've been having fewer and fewer conversations lately. Maybe it's because we don't talk much, but it's causing a lot of problems like this, I reflected. Mom's on her way, Tom suddenly announced. Right now, I exclaimed. Why does it matter? If she's coming, let me know so I can prepare. You're talking too much, Tom snapped back. She has a message for you, he added. Is it about kids again? I sighed. I've had enough. I don't care anymore, Tom muttered. That's why I hear every time I see her. It's your fault we can't have kids, so you need to explain it to her, I said, feeling frustrated. Just then, my mother-in-law walked in as we were talking. I'm sorry to interrupt. Here, I brought this for you, she said, handing me something. What is it? I asked. You can check them out yourself. They're a belly band and a lucky charm, she explained. What's the belly band for? I asked. It's important to keep your stomach cool when trying to have a baby, so you should use it, she advised. But it's too hot to wear a fuzzy belly band in the summer, I objected. You're looking at it the wrong way. This room is too cold because of the air conditioning. It chills your stomach, she argued. And how does this amulet work? I asked. It's a lucky charm from a famous temple for kids. After praying there, I heard that a celebrity had a baby. It seemed to bring good luck, so I went there yesterday despite the distance, she explained. You didn't need to go that far, I said. Don't worry just because you're more relaxed about this. As I've said before, I really want to see my grandkids. I went to the hospital, and it's not me, I repeated. Tom was sitting away from us, acting like he wasn't involved. Why haven't you gotten pregnant yet? My mother-in-law suddenly asked me. I'm not sure why you're asking, I replied. Why don't you try another hospital for a second opinion? Maybe a specialized hospital? I'll help you find one, she suggested. You don't have to do that. I'm sure it's not Tom, so I can only think it's because of you, I responded. Tom hasn't been checked yet. How can you be so sure he's not infertile? My mother-in-law asked. Because Tom, who seemed like he wasn't paying attention, interrupted the conversation. Mom, don't say things that aren't necessary, he advised. Sorry, my mother-in-law stopped talking suddenly. I think a package will be delivered by courier tomorrow, so please accept it, she said. I just wanted to give you this today, so I'll leave now, my mother-in-law announced before leaving me with only a belly band and a lucky charm for the baby. The next day, when the package arrived, I couldn't help but laugh. Inside were all sorts of good luck charms for having a baby. Your mom sent me a package. What was in it? I asked Tom. Pomegranates, herring roe, and peaches, he replied. Why did she send those? I wondered. All three are seen as lucky foods that are supposed to bring good fortune for having kids, he explained. I get it. Mom really wants to see her grandkids, I thought out loud. I understand she's excited, but it feels a bit overwhelming, Tom remarked. Why are you talking about mom like that? She's genuinely thrilled about having a grandchild, Tom defended. Don't you feel pressured too? 
I asked. Yeah, but I'm not worried. It's not my problem. It doesn't concern me, he replied. What do you mean it doesn't concern you? It's our issue because we're together, I argued. It's your problem that we can't have kids, so no, it's not my concern, he retorted. It feels like it's my fault that we can't conceive, even though the hospital says there's nothing wrong with me. So why don't you go to another hospital for a thorough checkup like my mom suggested? I proposed. Why don't you ask her to help find a good hospital? He suggested. The hospital I went to was well known for fertility treatments. But maybe it's just famous, not actually good, I speculated. If you're suggesting that, why not ask your mom to find one? He suggested. Are you finally willing to do it? I asked. Yes, if you also get checked out, he agreed. Why should I go to the hospital? I questioned. I couldn't understand why Tom was so confident. Then he dropped a bombshell on me. I've never mentioned it before, but you've been suspicious for a while, and I'm tired of hiding it, so I'll tell you, Tom confessed. What is it? I asked, confused. I've actually been married before, Tom revealed. What? What do you mean? I exclaimed, shocked. I got divorced two years before marrying you, he admitted. Why didn't you tell me? I demanded. Well, I got divorced because my ex cheated on me. She didn't ask for child support or anything, so I didn't think it was important to mention, he explained. Are you saying you have children? I asked, bewildered. A son, yes. I haven't seen him since he was born after the divorce, he confessed. I'm lost. I don't understand what you're saying, I admitted. That proves I'm not incapable of having kids. That's why you were so sure it wasn't me, he pointed out. I'm hurt that you think it's me, but it's possible you became infertile in the two years after your divorce, I argued. You're still blaming others. You're the issue, so own up to it and do something about it, he accused. I'm not talking about admitting or not admitting. You're starting to annoy me, I shot back. In my second year of marriage, I learned for the first time that Tom had been divorced and had a child. Even after hearing his story, I still wasn't completely convinced that I was to blame for our inability to have kids. I decided to dig deeper into Tom's past. I planned to ask for a divorce once I finished my research. I couldn't bear to stay with Tom any longer. I tried my best to avoid talking to him because he always said hurtful things to me. And of course, we never had intimate relations under such strange circumstances, so pregnancy was out of the question. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law, unaware of our situation, continued to pressure me about having children. Then, one day, Tom approached me looking irritated. By now, I was accustomed to being treated with disdain. He spoke up. I've been thinking about getting a divorce. We don't talk anymore. All we do is fight, and we haven't been able to have kids no matter how long I wait he declared. I was surprised by his sudden announcement, but I responded calmly. Okay, that's fine. What? Tom was puzzled by my response. He must have expected me to object. Here are the divorce papers. I've filled out all the necessary information already, he stated. What? Why are they already filled out? I asked, shocked. I filled them out so I could end things whenever I wanted. Do you want a divorce? He asked. Yes. I replied, only partly joking. I'm not joking. Do you really want this? He pressed. You said it yourself, I reminded him. I didn't think it would come to this. Did you expect me to beg you not to go through with it? He questioned. Well, we hardly talk anymore, so I thought maybe this was a chance for us to talk and fix things, I explained. Then why didn't you say that from the start? He asked. I wanted things to go back to how they were. But that's not possible, I replied. I'll divorce you right now if that's what you want, he offered. That's not what I want, I admitted. Despite Tom's offer for a divorce, he continued to complain. Our conversations went on, even though it seemed pointless. Then my mother-in-law arrived, right on time. What's going on? she asked. I went out with some friends and got you some gifts, she said, handing me another charm. I visited a different shrine known for childbirth, so I got you this. I've been praying there, and I'm sure it'll bring you good luck this time. We don't need this anymore, I declared. My mother-in-law's face lit up at my words, but I could tell she had misunderstood something. I had a feeling things were about to get complicated again. Well, does this mean you no longer need it? She asked eagerly. Finally, I guess it's because of all my efforts. I'm so relieved, she exclaimed. That's partly right. We need to go back to show our gratitude, she suggested. We. I asked. 
My mother-in-law stood before me, looking happy. Tom stood beside me, silent, avoiding eye contact. I knew my next words would disappoint my mother-in-law. What is it exactly? Please don't tell me you're about to say what I think you're going to say, she urged. We've decided to get a divorce, I announced. What? Divorce? I thought you were expecting a baby, she replied, shocked. We were just talking about it. Is this a sudden decision? She pressed. Not really. I've been thinking about it for a while, I explained. Are you leaving because you can't have kids? She speculated. No, that's not why I'm divorcing him, I clarified. Well, if you can't get pregnant, maybe it's better for him to divorce you and marry someone else, she suggested. It would be his third marriage, not second. You know that? I reminded her. I found out recently. His ex-wife got pregnant soon after they divorced, she revealed. Okay, I responded, feeling a mix of emotions. So I can only assume you're to blame. If you leave, I'll feel relieved, Tom's mother asserted. I understand. Tom has always been popular with women. He'll find someone soon. Hopefully, our next meeting will bring better news, I replied. Well, if you've made up your mind, get divorced soon. I'm leaving. You two sort out the rest, my mother-in-law declared before leaving, unaware of the whole truth. Once she left, Tom and I continued our conversation. Let's file for divorce right away. I want to start a family soon, and I realize I don't enjoy spending time with you anymore. Let's just get it over with, Tom suggested. Then do it quickly, I replied, handing him the papers to fill out. All I have to do is submit them. By the way, you'll have to leave the house when we divorce, I informed him. What? Why? Tom questioned. I've been making mortgage payments, have you forgotten? My parents paid off the loan and bought this house outright. You were just repaying my parents' loan, I clarified. Oh, so you're leaving because of this? Tom realized. We did have quite a bit of money saved up, he continued. I don't have any money saved, but didn't you say you had around ten million? I reminded him. That's the money I saved before we got married, so it's not included in the property division, he explained. Right. I confirmed. Well, it doesn't matter. You're starting a new chapter, he remarked. Yes, and I'm also going to sue you and your mother for emotional distress, I declared. What? Why? Tom asked, surprised. For all the hurtful things you've said to me, treating me like I'm defective, I explained. But it's true, Tom argued. Do you really think I'm the reason we couldn't conceive? I challenged. It's obvious. I have a biological child, Tom insisted. That's when I revealed everything to Tom, shocking him. It turns out your child from your ex-wife might not be yours, I revealed. What are you talking about? Tom asked, bewildered. I got curious about Tom's past after learning about his previous marriage, so I decided to look for clues in his house. Eventually, I found a picture, I explained. Tom tends to hold onto old memories, and I found a few tucked away in a drawer in his work desk, I continued. I looked up his ex-wife's name on social media and found her profile right away. From there, I learned more about who she was, I revealed. Isn't this your ex-wife? I showed him a screen from social media. Tom looked surprised, but I wasn't shocked. Is the child in this picture really yours? I asked him. Tom seemed puzzled. I continued with my story. This child clearly looks foreign. I was looking at your ex-wife's social media, and her husband is from another country. I'm not familiar with him. It seems they're living abroad, I explained. I divorced my ex-wife quickly because she cheated on me. But before the divorce, she got pregnant and claimed it was our child. I'm pretty sure it was his child, Tom admitted. Really? I asked. In any case, you don't have any biological children, I pointed out. Could I be the reason you can't conceive? Tom wondered. That's likely. I went to another hospital, and my body was fine. I'm going to get checked out too, I replied. Will you drop the divorce and go through treatment with me if I'm the reason you haven't been able to conceive? Tom asked. Why would I do that? I've already filled out the divorce papers. I'll file them tomorrow, I replied. Don't say that. I still care about you, Tom confessed. You don't enjoy being around me, do you? You'll find someone new soon, just as your mother predicted, I remarked. Let's discuss it again, Tom suggested. I'm filing for divorce tomorrow, and I want you to pack your things and leave this week, I insisted. Oh no, Tom muttered. You wanted a divorce, didn't you? I reminded him. I'll talk to my lawyer about alimony. He'll hear from us. The next day, 
I file for divorce. Tom moved out reluctantly back to his parents' place. It seems Tom hasn't told his mother that he might be the reason for our infertility. She's been pushing him to remarry quickly after the divorce, hoping for grandchildren. If he does remarry, I feel sorry for his next wife. His mother will probably pressure her too for not having children. Since the divorce, I've thrown myself into my work. I sold the house Tom and I share for a good price and repaid my parents the money they lent me, as well as the alimony I received from Tom and his mother. Now I'm living in an apartment. I've started dating a co-worker who was supportive during my divorce. We were friends before, and now we're living together. If I marry this man, I hope we'll be blessed with children and that I'll find happiness again.